Do you want to make your playthrough experience even better? Well, here we have seven tips that every Zelda Tears of the Kingdom player should know. Of course, the world of Hyrule here in Tears of the Kingdom is very vast, so whether you're new to the series or a veteran, there will be stuff in this video that you're bound to have missed out on, just because the size of the game is so big and it can be overwhelming, or you may have just not thought about it. For instance, it was only literally five minutes ago that we found out that you can use the spring device as suspension for your cars, which is a 10 out of 10 thing that you have to try. So, we thought we would compile a list of useful and cool tips that will make your life so much better and give you some extra options in the game. But if you have any weird and wonderful tips of your own, then make sure to share them with the community in the comments down below. Don't gatekeep those goodies for yourself, and like this video if you find it helpful. So the very first tip we want to share is to always use 5 Zonai charges in the dispenser machines on the Sky Islands, as this will result in more items being given to you. You can use Construct Horns to feed the machine, but feeding the machine with 5 large charges will give you an absolute ton of items, and if you are struggling to get these large charges for yourself, just know that you can purchase them very easily with Zonite at the material refineries in the depths down below, or the one in the Great Sky Island. So with Zonite and Large Zonite, you can purchase these charges very easily to get a ton of the devices that you may not have. The stock in the refineries will also refresh over time, so don't worry about them running out. The next tip is for an easy way to make elemental weapons and platforms on water. You can freeze water with any ice source to create blocks of ice on the water itself, and then you can fuse that ice block onto your weapon to use it as an elemental weapon that will then create more blocks of ice on water as well as freeze enemies. This is a simple yet highly effective weapon so definitely give it a try if you haven't. If you are looking for a way to freeze the water to do this, you can use the frost emitter or ice fruits which are easily accessible from the area northeast of the map in the Hebra region. Next up, you're probably very familiar with running out of stamina which makes you move very slowly. Well, you should be using elixirs to help you with this, but it can get a bit confusing where to find the materials that you will need. So we found a quick farming spot for some ingredients that you will need for elixirs, and you can do it right here near the start of the game. Go to Lookout Landing and exit into the grassy plains of Hyrule. If you slash the grass, it will reveal a bunch of creatures and critters, such as crickets and lizards. If you cook one of these crickets with a monster part in a pot, you will get a small stamina elixir, which you can use when you are just about to run out of stamina while climbing or doing anything that requires stamina. You can also do the same thing with the lizards that you find to get a movement boost. Simply increase the number of lizards or crickets that you use in this recipe to increase the potency of the elixir that you will create. Next up, did you know that you can actually get a whip weapon in this game? Well, by fusing a Lizalfoss tail to a weapon, it will result in a whip-like fused weapon that has extra reach and damage. These come in different elemental types, depending on the Lizal that you actually defeat. So if you're like us, you can find an ice one which will absolutely clap enemies as it freezes them, and then the follow-up hit hits extra hard. You can easily find several of these ice Lizals around the stables here in the Hebra region, which is also a great place to farm meat. For this next tip, we're assuming that many of you will already know that you can fuse Use a rocket to your shield to get an upwards rocket boost which is incredible for traversing around the map. But we rarely hear people talking about the fact that you can boost yourself forward with this as well. All you have to do is shield surf with a rocket fused onto it, and this will then allow you to zoom forwards with the rocket. To do this, all you need to do is hold down the shield block button, then jump and press the parry button while you are in the air to initiate a shield slide. When you're doing this while you have a rocket fused to your shield, it will start to zoom you away. An additional tip here if you do like shield surfing is that you can fuse a minecart or a zonite cart to your shield and use it as a skateboard, but not only that, if you do use a cart, you can actually grind on the railways in pretty much any of the sky islands or depths mines. While grinding, you can pull off tricks like you're a pro skateboarder and it's great fun, so give this a go and tell us how long you can keep the grind going for. Next up, a great thing to know if you have a problem with your favourite weapon always breaking is that there is actually a way to fix and repair it. To do this, you will need to head to the area surrounding Goron City. In this area, you will find plenty of Octoroks around. Run up to them and drop your nice weapon that is about to break on the floor nearby. Don't worry, it won't actually attack you and you will not lose your weapon. Instead, just run back and wait for it to suck your weapon in. The Octorok will then puff with a shine and spit your weapon back out at you, and now it will be shiny and new with its durability fully repaired. So if durability is is getting annoying and you're about to lose your favorite weapon, go and repair it with this tip. 
just be aware that the Octoroks can only be used a single time to repair a weapon. Then you must defeat them and wait for the next Blood Moon which will then respawn them, so make sure to remember you can only use them once each. This doesn't work on every single weapon, but it does work on a lot of them, so give it a try if you're about to lose your favourite weapon. Next up, if you're having difficulty building, then it's great to know that if you have the auto build power, the solution may be to visit the other abandoned mines down in the depths which will give you new schema stones of builds that you may not have already learned. But the abandoned mines aren't the only place that you can get these new schematics. If you roam the depths and encounter the Yiga clan camps, defeat the guards nearby and you will get a reward of a Yiga schematic. I found one for a wagon, so go searching and see what you're able to find, as there's probably a bunch of cool schematics out there that people haven't found yet. So hopefully after all of this you're clued up on some tips that everybody should know, and don't forget to use them in your playthrough. And if you have any tips that you think people should know, or that you've found very helpful in your own playthrough, then please do share them down below and make everyone's life a bit easier, and then we can all learn together as a community. Hit that like button if this video was helpful to you, and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And the two videos on screen now, we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this one. You don't have to watch them if you don't want to, but if you found this video interesting or helpful, you're probably going to like these ones too and then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.